Today on Free Field Training, we're going to be looking at 21 inch steel button collapsible batons from three different companies. We're going to be looking at the ASP Talon Infinity Baton, the Next Torch Nex 21C, and the Modenock Auto Lock in its 21 inch variant. The Modenock Auto Lock I have the most time on. I bought this at least 10 years ago. The ASP and the Next Torch were both provided to me a couple of months ago by the manufacturers. Thank you guys very much for helping the channel out. If you want to help the channel out, follow me over on Instagram. You can also be part of the conversation live as we do this and see what the live stream comments and questions were that I answer at the end of this video. Please follow me, Tommy underscore free field training, to check all of that out. There's, of course, also going to be links or coupon codes or whatever I have for all of this stuff down in the description. You can check those out to find out material specifications and the manufacturers and what the manufacturers are saying about these products in case you have further questions when the video is over. The sizes and weights of these batons are all approximately the same. They are designed and marketed for police duty use, which means it is meant to go on a patrolman's duty belt. That's its function. We're not necessarily taking a look at this from an EDC perspective or a martial arts perspective, although I think if you're that's what you're into, you might find some things here that you enjoy learning about them as well. And if you're cross-shopping these for any purpose, there's lots of things in this you're going to want to know before you go spending your hard-earned cash on these batons, and none of them are really cheap. The extended sizes of all the batons that we're looking at today are approximately the same. Also, these three batons, the weights of them are all approximately the same. They all weigh a smidge over one pound. Comparing these with other batons that are on the market, they weigh a little bit more than aluminum batons, even aluminum multifunction batons, and they all weigh a little bit more than friction lock batons of approximately the same size. Interestingly enough, they also weigh a little bit more than full-size wooden riot batons that are significantly larger than the extendable batons that we are talking about here today. Almost twice the size. Although the sizes and weights of the batons we're looking at today are all very similar, the functions and features of them are all a little bit different. And that's the minutiae we're going to get into today and what I think you're all here to find out about. They all open it about the same way. You can either pull on the end cap of them to open them up and lock them in place, or you can flick them out. Don't do it like that in real life. You're supposed to go down into your side, but I'm sitting. They all also close approximately the same way. You push a button on the end of the baton, and the baton closes back up. The differences come in how easy or difficult each of these is to open and close, and the materials that each baton is made of, and what materials are used in which part. There's also slight differences in how each of these parts interact, and the maintenance schedule for them that we're going to get into as well. So starting with the baton that I've been using the longest, this is my Modenock Auto Lock. It's fairly difficult to open this baton. You can do it just by grabbing the end and pulling it open, but you have to really put some force behind it in order to open it up and get it to lock in place. It also takes a significant amount of force to close it up. Not as much as a friction lock baton that you open and then have to basically beat off the ground to get it to close, but it does take a significant amount of force. For most applications with this, what people are going to do is they're going to flick it down to their side in order to extend the baton, or they're going to grab with two hands and pull straight out to extend the baton, and then to collapse it back down, they're going to push the button on the end of it and then push it into their body. And that makes it easy to get enough force behind it to close the baton up without having to hit it off of the ground. The Asp Talon Infinity Baton opens a little easier. One of the great things about this baton is that you can just grab by the end of it with two fingers and two fingers on the other side and pull the baton open and you can hear it clicking open and close. I'm going to get that close so that hopefully you guys can hear it. And it locks into place fairly easily. It doesn't take a lot of force to open it and it also doesn't take a lot of force to close it. I can push the button and close it up with one finger. Making it easier to use is a great aspect of ASP's design, and of course ASP's design is newer, so we would expect that type of innovation from them. The next torch baton, the next 21C, opens also very easily, easier than the ASP, and also when you push the button and push down on it, it also closes more easily. 
There's advantages and disadvantages to the opening and closing and how easily they open and close. And there's some maintenance issues that are tied in with those. With the modded knock, it's a lot harder to open and close because I think the tolerances inside are a little tighter all around. It's an older design and it requires a significant amount of maintenance, especially if you're in an area where you get a lot of inclement weather or if you have sand in the area that you're in. You have to get inside these things, spray them down and lubricate them, all of the parts, quite frequently. So when we open this up, the, the shaft of the baton needs to be lubricated. You can see in the close-up here that there's rings on the finish of this. You can see it's all covered in oil. Now, obviously, this is an older baton. It's about, I don't know, 12 to 15 years old. I don't remember exactly when I bought this. But it's been over a decade of use on this thing. And the maintenance schedule is a lot heavier on it. If we look inside of the modded knock, we find the push button is attached to a threaded end cap that is steel. It is magnetic. The threads are fairly coarse in here, and inside everything that's in here needs to be lubricated in order to keep it working properly. Pulling this all the way apart, in here is a, a split end on the end of this rod that comes from the button down inside. And then in here is a retention clip. And if you can see way down inside of there, there's a hole to the mechanism inside that's uh, kind of rusted because I'm not nearly as good on the maintenance of any of my stuff as I probably should be. But after 15 years of spending all of its time outdoors, shouldn't be surprised some of these are gonna have a little bit of rust in areas that are harder to access. You can also tell that over time, I've gotten some rust here on the end cap. That's also a function of this being on my belt and out in the rain. Uh, another difference with the modded knock baton and maintenance is that you have a polymer tip on the end of this. It is not magnetic, the tip itself. This is the original polymer tip, and one of the advantages of a polymer tip on the baton is that even when the tip gets slightly damaged, it is less likely to cause abrasion and cutting on somebody's skin when you hit them with a baton, also less likely to damage the pads that you use in training uh, and testing and whatever else with these batons. So if you're using your little baton shield and hitting it or you're hitting a heavy bag with it, it's less likely to damage that. It also is a lot easier if you do get a sharp edge of this to flatten it out. You can just take a, an emery board, a nail file or something, and file it down and it makes it fairly smooth. The ASP uh, Talon Infinity Baton doesn't require any lubrication at all, according to ASP. Uh, if you open it up inside, unscrew the end cap the same way. In here, the button mechanism isn't attached to this end cap. You've got a rod that just has a pointed end to it, attached to a spring load on the button. Actually kind of looks like a an AR firing pin in there, a really, really big one. And then down inside of the baton, let's get closed up for you here. You can see the mechanisms inside of this are anodized. And there's a spring-loaded metallic clip in here that can uh, come flying out on you because it's not really retained by anything when you take the baton apart. Boop. It does make it very easy to take this apart for cleaning and maintenance. And since it does not require any lubrication, basically you just clean it off. I've been cleaning it off with WD-40, let it dry, put it back together, and so far so good with several months of using this. Haven't had any issues with the baton sticking open or not wanting to deploy. The end cap on this is aluminum, which I found out after a couple of window break attempts and some dropping on the ground. There's wear, of course, on all of these because I've been using them. I always use this stuff before I review it, but there's a, a few dimples on the aluminum end of this. Since the magnet stuck to it, I assumed it was steel, but if you take it off and it's not backed by the steel underneath, you can tell pretty clearly that it's aluminum. It's not non-magnetic. I'm assuming it's aluminum. The tip for 
the Asp Talon Infinity Baton. It's just like the Modern Knock. It's 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 secured on there pretty well. It doesn't easily unscrew. Uh, the tip is steel. You can heat these tips and replace them. There's a couple of different featured tips on here. There's like a glass breaker tip and some other stuff that you can attach on here. Uh, it has been fairly durable. There's not a lot of damage to this, although I have used it quite a bit. And you can see just like the modern knock tip, it extends out the sides of the shaft of the baton. This makes it fairly easy to concentrate striking force on one point. And remember with one of these batons, since we're using something that's, that's lighter on the end and it's shorter overall, we're really relying on that tip speed in order to make contact and make the baton effective. Lastly, taking a deeper dive into the Next Torch Next 21C, this baton opens extraordinarily easily. The end cap on it unscrews in the same manner. It has a kind of similar mechanism inside. You can see this has white lithium grease all over it. That's the lubrication that comes with it from the factory. I haven't had to replace the white lithium grease inside. And then in here you can see that the mechanism for holding the baton for locking it open and closed is a four-pronged affair that locks out and then gets pulled back in when you push the end cap in. I don't know if you can see that on video, but when you pull this out, the clips pop out, and when the rod goes in, like you're pushing it in, the clips retract back in and allow it to open and close. All of these components here appear to be aluminum, except, again, the end cap on this, which is evident by the little bit of damage from dropping a couple times on the end cap. But all the rest of this all of the, let's say, weight-bearing components inside appear to be steel. When we extend this baton out, we'll notice that the tip on it does not extend out past the end of the baton. So while you've got kind of a bulbous tip on your modern knock and kind of a bulbous tip on your ass baton, this is flush to the end of the baton, but the section, the final section of the baton is slightly thicker. The end for the next torch also is a lot easier to remove. It comes kind of coarsely threaded on. Just a little nub of a tip here. If I was going to use this long term, I would definitely put a little bit of Loctite on there. And that's what we're going to get to now is overall impressions actually using these batons on the street. Obviously, I have the most experience with the modded knock baton. And it has served me very well. The only problems I've ever had with it are the, the ongoing maintenance issues with making sure it stays cleaned and lubricated in good working order. There's been two or three times in 10 years that it has either been sticky to pull out or I pushed the button and went to collapse it and it wouldn't collapse down. And both of those times were my fault for not lubricating the baton properly. When I took it home, cleaned it out and lubed it, it worked fine right afterward. The ass baton, on the other hand, I've used for about four or five months now. I haven't had any issues with it yet. It has gotten a little bit of, of grit and grime in it from falling down on the ground uh, in dirt and mud and slush and stuff here in the wintertime in the Chicagoland area. I haven't found any spots of rust anywhere on it. The finish is pretty good. Even on the little end caps here where I've uh, hit a window with it and dropped it on the ground a couple times, I haven't found the finish to really come off the way it has on my modding knock or over on the next torch where the finish immediately starts flaking off. Both the modded knock and the ass both have pretty cool grips on them that seem to be very, very durable. I have had no major issues with the modern knock over, you know, over 10 years of service. You can see there's just a little bit of fraying on the end here and it's never gone past that. And I've never replaced the grip on any of these. The grip on the ASP shows absolutely nowhere at all. And I think some of that has to do with how ASP puts a steel section in front of the grip, whereas Monodoc ran the grip all the way to the area of the tip. So when you're putting this into a pouch, you're putting the asp into a pouch, there's a steel section that takes most of that wiggly wear going in and out of the pouch, whereas with the Monodoc, it's all getting rubbed up against the grip, and that's why you see a little more wear on the end of this. Next Torch does a very similar thing to asp having a smooth finish section at the top before it gets to grip. Even with that, there's a little bit of wear on the grip area around the outside from taking it in and out of the pouch. The next torch 
Although these are all approximately the same size, this one seems to stick a little more into the pouch. It seems like it's specced, the grip on it at least, is specced a little larger than the other two. All of these though do fit in all of the holders that I have for extendable batons, regardless of who makes the holder. So you can kind of buy anybody's holder that you like and works for your purposes and put any of these in them. As far as day-to-day -day use, the big differences between these for most people is going to be the opening and closing function and the results that it has on your ability to effectively do things on the street. The auto lock is a little harder to open and close. Uh, that makes it sometimes a little rough to open it. If it gets dirty, a little rougher to close. Like I said, I had one case where I couldn't get the baton closed until I took it apart and cleaned it and relubricated it. The ASP, although I have less time on it, I haven't had any of those issues. And because the tolerances are a little more open inside of this and the materials are different, it doesn't require any lubrication, according to ASP, long term for this to stay this way. So you probably won't have the same issues you'd have with the monodoc. It also retains just enough where it doesn't come open when I say sit in my car. With the ASP, it takes a significant amount of force to get this to come open. It'll drop down a little bit in the holder maybe, but not very much. With the monodoc, you'd you have to really throw your back into it to get this to open. It's not just going to come open sitting in the holder. If you're going to jump into Next Torch, uh, these open <laughs> at uh, the drop of a hat, any hat. And it's not even the smallest section that's opening, it's the larger one. So if you have an open bottom pouch that you're going to want to put a baton in, uh, what I have found is that, like in my Safari Land 035, I've been using with all three of these at work. I will sit in the car, and just the act of sitting in the car will extend the baton out. Is it a big deal? Not entirely, unless you fall on it, in which case you end up with a bent up baton. We've seen those on the channel here. That's really common with friction lock batons, because once you open a friction lock baton, you, you can't really close it up easily, and then if you end up fighting with somebody, you end up falling on the baton, especially near stairs, and it bends up. So of course, links for all of these are down below. If you have any comments or questions, please put them down below in the comment section. I'd love to do my best to give you answers to them if you're trying to decide which one of these to buy. I'm also going to have the manufacturer's website so you know who manufactures them, where, and what the material specifications are. So now I'm going to head over to the Instagram live stream, take some comments and questions for them. If you want to be part of the conversation over on Instagram, you can go over and follow me, Tommy underscore free field training, be part of the conversation or see what their comments were and what my reactions were while we were doing this live. Until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching free field training on YouTube. And while you're here, why don't you check out some of these other goofy videos that I've made? Or you could subscribe or maybe go over to Patreon and see how you can get your name put on the videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are, of course, down in the description. We'll see you guys next time.